Welcome to another episode of Tiwa Did That. I'm Tiwa, and this video is happening less than two months after my last one, so let's celebrate that. But look, what do we do here on Tiwa Did That? Luxury fashion, luxury skincare, and luxury travel that doesn't take itself too seriously. And in today's video, what we're not gonna be taking too seriously is my haircut, <laughs> because even though I'm usually very snatched on camera, um, I had to push out my haircut to meet my travel plans that are coming up. So by the time you guys see this, I might already be on my way or already where I'm going, but what we know for sure is that I'm gonna have a clean fade, okay? But look, we're not here to talk about my hair. What this video is about is luxury travel slash luxury fashion because we're gonna be talking about what bags I fly with on vacation. How do I choose them? How many? And what's too many, what's too little, and what goes through my mind when I pack them? And where do I pack them? There's a lot to unpack, okay? So let's get in, but not so fast. Just for the sake of familiarity and sticking to Tiwa Did That traditions, we wouldn't be at a Tiwa Did That video without unboxing the stuff that forced me to shoot this video in the first place. Love you guys, love you guys. I want to start with skincare because as you know, I had to drop La Mer from my skincare routine in solidarity with the people of Palestine. The genocide is ongoing and like so many of you, I'm absolutely speechless in the face of the inaction of our leaders. Um, but again, all we can do is continue to be educated, speak out and support BDS efforts being organized by members of our communities. And in support of BDS, which I'm still practicing, and I hope you guys are too, I have recently let go, not recently actually, from the very beginning, I let go of a product line that um, I really thought I was going to use for the rest of my life. So everybody knows that I used to live for the La Roche-Posay and Thelios uh, hydrating cream sunscreen. I think I even mentioned it on here. I told you how fab it was. It's a fab formula but the ethics of that corporation do not align with my values. And so I will not be sponsoring them anymore with my money. My little pennies that, you know, don't mean a thing, but it's my prerogative and I'm exercising my prerogative for the BDS movement. And so I have replaced my La Roche-Posay sunscreen with a product that has absolutely blown me away. So let's get in. If you even have like a TikTok, you've seen this. This is the Super Goop. Can you even see that? Much better. This is the Super Goop sunscreen, the unseen sunscreen. This is such a viral product. Why? Because it goes on totally unseen. It's like a gel, but it dries very velvety. It doesn't dry you out. It dries on. It's a really, really easy sunscreen to layer. This is the box it comes in. This is the 50 milliliter size. Not the cheapest sunscreen in the world, but I think it's really, really worth it. This is my second box. My first one's not even finished. I am absolutely obsessed. So let's just have a look at what the product looks like. Here's the box. Here's the item. It's a really simple screw off cap. And guys, I love the application of this product. It comes right out of this nozzle. It doesn't give me as much mess as other sunscreens. You sort of just smear it into your hands. It has a nice concave um, dispenser here. It's a really, really clean design. The only thing that kind of pisses me off is when you have slick hands, it's not as easy to screw this back on as you might like. But that is a small price to pay for a sunscreen that doesn't leave any white cast for my brothers and sisters out there. Doesn't leave any white cast, okay? And it's pretty much all day, even though you're supposed to reapply every two hours. Um, <laughs> it's pretty much all day, and I love this sunscreen. So great way to stay out of the sun, great way to support BDS, great way to not look like a tea bag at 30. So in somewhat of a controversial move, I have made a purchase from a brand that was recently embroiled in some scandal. I have to be honest. Um, 
So we're gonna keep it really brief. I'm not gonna gas them. I just needed a pair of shoes, and so I bought these. Um, these are not, you know, a high fashion item. These are not so glamorous, but they do make extremely high quality slides, which are hard to come by. Gucci slides are some of the most atrocious quality. Like they're strictly college slides, and I will not expand on that further because you know exactly what I mean. So I got these slides instead. These are the Balenciaga slides, rubberized flap or strap in um, clay, I think is the name of this color. It's a cute little uh, Balenciaga underneath, um, logoed front. I think it's great because it's not exactly my skin tone. I was so scared that these were gonna be too close to my skin tone and then we're gonna have an issue with me looking like I grew a pair of slides out of my foot. Not flattering. So they come in two separate dust bags. It's just a slide, guys. It's um, not that serious. But uh, yeah, there they are. There they were. Let's move on. I have been living for Hermes for a long time, but recently, as you may know if you've been watching my videos, I have been digging into the very depths of Hermes equitation gear. And that's where you get this very strange box. I mean, look at, you know, I mean, hey, so this box contains something quite odd from Hermes, but super, super useful. And I cannot wait to add this to my horse riding repertoire. I have never received a box like this from Hermes. It's insane, truly. Like I've never gotten a box like this from Hermes in all my years of like shopping from this brand. So here we go. So we have the dust bag. You know, what is that? Let's find out. You may know already, like obviously it's for horse riding. So like, you know, let's turn it on, let's turn it on. What do you think this is? Um, you may know what it is, but you're not gonna guess what it looks like. This is just another example of the effort and the detail that Hermes puts into every single thing they make. Oh, okay, let's get it. This is an Hermes riding crop, okay? So if you don't know what that is, it's not a kink object, okay? I wonder if chains and whips excite him. None of your business. But this is an Hermes riding crop. So as a horse rider, what I would be doing, if this is where the um, fence is, I would have this on my inside rein, okay? Holding the reins like this, and I would be holding my dressage stick or my crop like this, and I would tap the horse on the shoulder to give instructions or alerts, you know, to the horse. People think that you're supposed to literally beat your horse's ass with one of these. That is strictly for television and is highly unethical practice from an actual equestrian. No equestrian worth their salt needs this to get a horse to do anything. My coach actually recommended that I go ahead and buy a dressage stick or a crop. Um, she didn't say I went to Hermes or she go to Hermes, but I did. But um, yeah, this is so incredible. I'm really, really glad to have this. Look at the details. I think it's hickory wood, twisted and braided into this gorgeous elder wand shaped fantasy, beautiful calfskin handle. It actually comes in orange as well, but I figured that um, orange was not the right color to take with this, guys, because horse riding is dirty, dirty business. You cannot bring expensive things to the stable and just expect that it's going to remain in pristine condition. That is not real life. Horse riding is really, really hard work. And you can't afford to baby your belongings when you're on horseback. It's not gonna work. You have to have things that you're comfortable aging, you're comfortable using. And so having this in black, I think, is the right way to go. And I'm really, really thrilled to have this. Here's the uh, sticker fresh out of the box. I have not used this yet, and sadly, I won't be able to until I get back on my vacation. Oh well. 
So those are all the unboxings I have for you today. Let's get into the point of the video, which always takes me like 10 to 12 minutes to get to. Thanks for watching. Um, because I travel a lot, I have a lot of experience taking along luxury bags, expensive bags, and I've come a long way with that process, guys. In my travels, I had to go from having no idea what I was doing as it comes to luxury bags and bringing them along to sort of streamlining my process into something functional, good, useful, safe that I can give to you guys. I mean, for example, at one point, I was checking in luxury bags. I was putting them in check bags. Please don't ever check in your luxury bags. They will steal them and you're gonna get it. Oh my God, that's crazy. And that's it. Please hand luggage only, okay? So I learned that, not the hard way, but I learned that. I also used to pack way too many bags. There was a time I used to pack like eight handbags and then I would like go in the opposite direction and I would only pack one handbag or two. So I landed on a perfect number. And I know it's going to be controversial when I say it. Even if I say it's a thousand, it's going to be controversial. But the correct number of handbags to pack on vacation, three, three, only three bags. Now you're probably scratching your head and thinking, well, you what? there are more than three bags here. You're right. You're right. And that's because I don't count extracurricular bags. So what are extracurricular bags? Extracurricular bags are bags that are not for serving. You know what I mean? So they're bags that are for like going to dinner, giving a look, being seen. And then there are bags that you physically need to assist you with some sort of task. Let me contextualize this by just getting into the bag. So one of the functional or extracurricular bags I always take on vacation, no matter what, aside from the three bags, is this Dior book tote. So let's have a look at this. This is my Dior book tote in camo, um, in this like shadow camo green. This bag is in such good condition because I use it very seldom. Hold on. Let's just open this up for you guys to get the fantasy. It's a really great bag, guys. Super functional, really, really good. I mean, no complaints. I use this bag for tennis. When I play tennis, as you can see, I use this bag and I also use my Louis Vuitton tennis uh, uh, bag to carry my racket, my Louis Vuitton racket bag. This is so useful for tennis because it doesn't stain, it doesn't scratch, it actually is a dark color, so it doesn't show sunscreen marks. I can put sunscreen in here, water in here, towels, tennis balls, everything I need for a good game of tennis. I don't need a Birkin bag on the tennis court. Not that girl. But I love this bag, and it's very, very functional for that exact purpose. So this will be coming along on vacation, but it does not count as one of the three bags that I'm bringing, that I'm bringing on holiday. In somewhat of a controversial move, this is one of the first vacations I've taken in years where I didn't bring along a Birkin or a Kelly because I never put my Birkins or my Kellys in a suitcase. Not hand luggage, not check luggage, none. I put it in my hand the entire time. It's always on my person. And I just don't want to deal with that for this holiday because there's like a lot of driving. So not going to happen. What we're going to get instead is a, where's the logo? A Louis Vuitton bag. I'm gonna show you which one it is right now. This is taking too long to come out. This is my Louis Vuitton key ball in um, Infini Damier. Show you guys. This is a Louis Vuitton key ball in Infini Damier, color mimosa, satinized hardware. You can see it's like matte. It's a really, really, really nice bag. I mean, I don't even think they make these anymore. This bag has been with me through thick and thin. It is an incredible bag. I actually had this in college. So this bag is, I mean, years and years and years old. I absolutely love it. Um, it's got my initials on it. When I was, back when I was obsessed with putting my initials on bags in this gorgeous blue. I did this actually in my home store back in the US when I lived there. So this is going to be the bag that I use for actually um, traveling. It's going to be with me, with my hand luggage, the same way a Birkin or a Kelly would traditionally be with me when I travel. 
look, get into that print, guys. How chic is that? Absolutely fab. <sighs> yeah. So that's that about that. So now we're gonna get into the serving bags, okay? And there are three, only three. So we're gonna start with the first one. It's another Louis Vuitton. And if you're familiar with this shape, this like croissant shape, you're gonna know exactly what bag this is. And you're gonna be like, oh my God, how did you even get that? Because I'm that girl, okay? So this is, as you guessed, the Louis Vuitton original bum bag. This is a discontinued Louis Vuitton bag, and it's in incredible condition for a bag that no longer exists. It's in incredible condition. Look at this vaquetta, how nice and bright the color is. Look at the vaquetta here on the strap. It's a really, really great bag, and I've taken very, very good care of it because it is literally out of production. And if you don't know the story about this bag and how it's so crazy that I have it, when they first made this bag, they did not predict at Louis Vuitton how popular it was going to be. This bag was poorly priced. That was the big problem. Louis Vuitton was selling this for about $1,600 when it first came out because they didn't know how hot it was gonna get. And so when they realized that they were constantly and consistently quarter after quarter missing out on the sales, the potential sales of this bag and the, and the margin they would be getting if they priced this at like 2,000 because people would still have bought it. This bag was hot. Instead of continuing to miss out on those revenues, they decided for some reason to just discontinue it. And so even though they reissued the bum bag in different styles and in different colors, it's not this one. I don't know why they didn't just put this back out. It has a beautiful back zip. It's got a full zip here. Absolutely cavernous. It's stuffed right now, which is why it keeps such a good shape. I really look after this bag because they never put this back out. They never put this back out. So anyway, this is one of the serving bags and it is a serve. Let's be clear. So guys, now we're getting into the Hermes. We will be bringing two Hermes bags on this trip because obviously, right? Um, but actually one of these bags I have never shown you guys, never had it on the channel, never talked about it, never made a video about it because it just didn't come up. I wanted this bag for a while. I asked and I asked and I asked, and then one day they called me in, you know how it goes. So here it is. And what do we have here? We have a Constance, it's not a fucking Constance. What do we have here? We have my gorgeous mini Evelyn PM in Rose Extreme. Look at this color, guys. You can only appreciate it when the light is adjusted on the camera. It's a warm but strong pink. Absolutely stunning. If you're not familiar with this bag, it comes with a strap of the same color as you can see, but we're just gonna like leave the strap away because it's not really constructive to what we're discussing right now. If you guys want a deep dive on this bag, um, let me know because I've had it for years. I can tell you everything there is to know about it. Um, it's pretty cavernous inside and you have like a cute little closure right here. And then if you're wondering where the blind stamp is, it's actually underneath the, um, underneath the thingy right there. I hope that focuses. You might think this is a hard bag to wear because it's bright pink, but actually a bag like this just suggests that you take it there with your fashion, you know? When you're wearing this bag, you can't just wear, you know, brown or, or, or light blue. You have to really give more primary colors. And so it forces you to sort of be more interesting and, and vibrant with your wardrobe. And that's why I'm so appreciative of this bag. It's really forced me out of my comfort zone many times, <laughs> this bag. You need to meet this bag where it is, and that's why it's the perfect bag to bring on vacation and make a scene. Last bag, you know her, you love her. <laughs> you know, shit, I know her, I love her, okay? Um, this is the mother of all my mini bags. This is the queen of delicacy. This is the absolute overall chaplain of taking it. This is my 
Constance 18 in box leather, guys. You know her, you love her. You know, don't act like you don't know her. Don't act like you don't know her. This bag is an absolute stunner, okay? And this bag is coming on this vacation for a couple of reasons. The first one being it is a hands-free bag. So that hardware, gag. It's got a strap. It's very, very functional in that way. And so I'm really, really um, glad to bring it along with me on this vacation. But I want you guys to clock something now that we have all three bags out. Look at the versatility here, okay? That's the first thing I want to talk about. The versatility from a color perspective, this is a warm neutral, browns, tans. This is a cold neutral, silver, black, dark, moody. And then this is a pop of color as we discussed at great length. So you see how much variety there is there, right? Now let's talk about functionality. On vacation, you have so many moving parts, okay? You're standing up from the dinner table, you're leaving the hotel, you're going to breakfast at the, at the, at the lobby of the hotel or wherever it is. You know, you have lunch, you stand up, you walk around, you sightsee, functional bags with straps, absolutely indispensable on holiday. Anybody with a Birkin bag can tell you how annoying it is to hoist that lead weight all day marching around an unfamiliar city. You need a strap bag, and I am so blessed to have enough Hermes bags to travel exclusively with bags with straps. So that's what I'm doing. Small bags, utility, very, very important. So we've talked about variety of color. We've talked about high functionality. And what's the last thing that I look for when I'm deciding which bags to bring on vacation? Are they sickening? Are they sickening? And you might ask yourself, well, is it that important? Isn't it important that I love it? Isn't it important that it works for me? Well, maybe if this was Barney and Friends, that would be true. But the fact is that on vacation, you don't have the opportunity to bring your whole wardrobe with you. You can't walk up to people and say, oh, I have a Birkin bag at home. I'm such a good customer at Hermes, you know? <laughs> you can't do that. You have to just bring what you're bringing and bring it hard. And so you have to ask yourself, when you're choosing your bag, is this what I'm comfortable serving to the children? Is this what I'm comfortable letting strangers that you will never see again, don't get me wrong, is this what I'm comfortable serving to total strangers that I'll never see again? Are they gonna look at me and go, oh, that girl has the tea? Or are they gonna be like, oh, well, she tried her best, you know? It seems so shallow, but the truth is that, you know, you wanna feel good on vacation. You don't wanna feel like you don't have as much choice or as many options as you do at home. You want to pack in a way that sort of complements your wardrobe, gives you versatility and space and range, something bright, something dark, something warm, and really um, give you room to express yourself on vacation. Just because you can't pack every single thing you own doesn't mean that you're restricted. If you pack well, you can really deliver on being a bad bitch, wherever you are. And that's the lesson I want you guys to go home with today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guys, all these bags will be swept up into my Ramoa hand luggage to come with me on my gorgeous vacation to Napa Valley, uh, Vegas, and the Grand Canyon in the US for a month. I am leaving for a month. And I definitely want to film something for you guys when I'm out there. I can call it like the luxury travel angle of Tiwa did that, that we are yet to explore after all this time. I just don't know what format to use. Do you guys want that on a YouTube short? Or do you want that on a traditional video? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. And that is it for today's video. I have a thousand things to do today. I can't believe I have all these bags out at the same time. I'm getting anxiety. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Instagram right there. Oh, free Palestine. Free Palestine. See you next time on T-Wedded Bad. Bye.